Good day, everyone. Today, we're going to discuss about business functions and supply chains, part one. Just like with our other releases, there are two parts so that we can manage well the content. Here are our objectives. We identify various business functions and the role of information systems in those functions. If we say business functions, normally we talk about the functional departments. Then information systems relationship as to the basic business functions are to be explained and how they relate with each other. Next is to articulate what supply chains are, so explain such, and how IT supports the management of supply chains. Then enumerate the purposes of CRM or customer relationship management systems and also explain ERP or enterprise resource planning systems. Let's begin with a review of the difference between effectiveness and efficiency. In management discussions, the two actually are being used interchangeably in sentences and discussions. However, we would be able to know that there's actually a difference of the two, but there's a connection. If we say effectiveness, basically, this is how, or this talks about the degree to which a goal is achieved. So we talk about the situation by which we achieve our goals and objectives. While efficiency is the relationship between the achievement of the goals and our resources consumed or expended. So in other words, effectiveness is geared towards the achievement or fulfillment of a goal or objective, but without respect to the resources consumed. But efficiency is. That's why there's a formula at the bottom, efficiency equals benefit over cost, such that benefit is greater than costs. One system is more efficient if its operating costs are lower for the same or better quality products. That's it. Because, for example, we have lesser resources, but the quality of our products decreased or are sacrificed in the process or is sacrificed. So in that case, it's not efficiency anymore. So it should be that all other things being constant, the quality of the product is maintained. So we just have to talk about the resources consumed, be it that raw materials, direct labor, or time itself. Next, productivity, on another hand, is basically what we can see a while ago on the formula. We can also translate productivity equals our benefit, the output over cost input. So in productivity, we talk now about the human resources efficiency. It has been noticed that productivity improves when fewer workers are required to achieve the same goal. The reason of that is because we are no longer in the industrial age or era where we focus on the fact that we need more people there. Nowadays, we have machines, we have equipment to help us. In addition, we have computers among the information systems that we have also to help us in achieving our goals. So we have here also our productivity tools, which are the software applications utilized or used to improve productivity. And ISS would contribute to both. Next, for CRM, which will be tackled also a bit later in part two, this is a system that serves customers better and faster. In this case, we're looking into the efficiency or the efficiency of the business to be able to provide and deliver the goods and services to the customers as soon as the need arises or the needs would arise. Then often combined with SCM systems to create an enterprise resource planning for the ERP system. And here we have our effectiveness and efficiency. So we have our CRM, which focuses with the customers from marketing, from promoting our products. Then the actual sale happens. And after that, our post sales services support. So the customer service. On another end, we have the SCM, which basically connects the entity with the suppliers and the customers. So suppliers, of course, we have our vendors who provides or that provide us our respective raw materials and supplies for the production. Then our customers who are 
going to buy or purchase our products or be rendered with our services. And these activities would also involve, in that case, marketing and sales, human resource management, accounting, financial management, technology services, and other support services to be able to do the process. If we can notice, we can actually begin from the supplies, so pay for supplies. We receive the supplied raw materials and parts. Prior to that, if we purchase supplies on account, so the payment would come afterwards. After the receipt for the supplied raw materials and parts, we have to develop material requirements and purchase, then plans and schedules. We collect the receivables for the sales. If ever, we pack and ship, and then we, of course, produce our goods. So basically, those are the items here. But then we can notice the arrow. I actually illustrated to you the reverse flow of that. So basically, we begin with develop plans and schedules. So from there, with the plans and schedules, so we now look into our requirements. The requirements are those items needed for the production. Then we actually receive the supplied raw materials and parts because this is purchased on account. Then we pay for our supplies. If we have the supplies, we produce our goods. Then if we have the orders, we pack and ship if confirmed orders, of course. Then normally receivable, so we now bill and collect. And these items would be part of our ERP or the Overall Corporate Enterprise Resource Planning Systems or ERP. Next would be the continuation wherein ISS in different business functions are interdependent. So in other words, although they are operating in separate departments and functions, but their functions will have connections with each other. So example, if let's say we talk about marketing research for possible opportunities in the market, and then that is found out later on, of course, people will take action in the marketing department in the form of advertising and promotion. But prior to that, where would marketing research get their information? They look into the sales of the company. So they have to work also, hand in hand, they need information from the sales department. So that is just an example of interdependency of each other, among other things. And we can see also the arrows being connected with each other. So again, I just mentioned about Salesforce with market research and also the needs for our products for the MRP, Manufacturing Resource Planning, involving our raw materials, direct labor, and factory overhead among other components. And on this section, we can see our respective functional departments. Next, accounting. As a functional department, this will look into the recording of transactions, the transactions which are about the business, financial in nature, then has to be processed or have to be processed to form into the outputs of the accounting process called financial statements to be presented and published for the users of the financial statements for their wise economic decision-making and common needs. Accounting systems are required by law and for proper management. Of course, the law has to ensure, the government agencies has to ensure, like Bureau of Internal Revenue, among others, and also the other agencies, that the company is properly reporting the transactions of the company because they will be basing their respective, for example, taxes out of those reports. Then also to check if the company is profitable, we know that. AP and AR tracking also for our cycle of operations. So we talk about the liabilities for accounts payable from the purchases and accounts receivable coming from the sales. Then our balance sheet, now known as statement of financial position, would be showing the picture of financial situation of the company, including profit and loss report. AIS, which is another course that is tackled, would be receiving information from TPS. TPSs would be processing the respective transactions. This would automatically wrote purchases to accounts payable. So 
basically the AIS would be focused on accounting on the financial transactions of the business, then would connect from one area to another. Also sales to AR because they are accounts that are connected with each other. The demand are to be generated and on schedule. Then work order is an authorization to perform work for a specific purpose. It's like also the job order that we know of. Also, part of AIS would be the cost accounting systems about the values or cost in the production. Then also for managerial purposes like budgeting and cost control. So if managers would like to analyze about the company's how they manage the resources and for other prospective and futuristic and future-oriented decision-making, then they can make use of the history coming from our accounting information systems or the outputs from the historical financial statements or of such can be utilized to be able to prospect to what can happen in the future. Then here is accounting as well as the accounting AIS that would definitely show us the up-to-date performance of the organization in financial terms. So those things as shown here are actually mentioned a while ago. Next, finance on another hand is not just about managing our resources. This would also focus into making sure that the opportunities are maximized in order also to maximize the shareholders' wealth in the form of share or increased share or stock prices. So health of the organization is measured by its finances. Normally, we talk about cash flows of the entity and the stocks and the shares prices. ISS can improve financial management also so that the reporting can be easily done and all. Then financial manager's goal is to manage money as efficiently as possible by we have to look into ways that we can have cash as soon as possible. And for the payments, at least we can pay them on time and just before any additional charges are to be made, like interest, penalties. Basic concept in financial management is that if we can delay the obligation without additional interest or cost, then that's okay or fine. So please refer to financial management courses for that. I've also have such in this respective channel. Then ensuring funds are available for daily operations, that's true. We should have funds available, cash position is important. And also if there are opportunities for investment, we have the funds. Next this is the finance, I said. So budgeting and forecasting, closely related to management accounting because this is geared towards future, that's finance also. Cash position is looked into and investment analysis. So as said here, financial information systems help manage cash and investment portfolios. Cash management in another case, to be more specific, we'll be talking about finances again or the cash position and the cash availability of the company. This can make or break a business. If we don't have cash available and emergencies would happen, where would we get such? EFT or electronic funds transfer is the transfer of money from one bank account to another. Next, investment analysis and service is also very important for investment opportunities, but normally long term. So we do not get the return of that immediately. Then the goal of the investor is to buy an asset and sell it for a higher value. Basic concept in investment is we buy low, we sell high. Then when investing in securities, you must know current prices in real time. If we are into investments, we would be able to know that the values of such would really change or fluctuate even on seconds. If we talk about that, if you have the platform or software for investing, but normally that can be averaged on a daily basis. Then nearly instantaneous IESs can provide investors and clients with financial news, stock prices, commodity prices, and currency exchange rates. That's so nowadays we have the business channels or the business networks wherein we can see updates. There are news or flash news about business, and there are also available information even online and in YouTube about such. Well, these are the factors in investing. We have to make sure about 
our returns because the returns can be fluctuating and can vary from one period to another. So if you look at the past yields, we can see the variability. But if you are going to summarize everything, you will be able to know that the return is really increasing over time, despite our inflationary factors. Expected return is also very important because we're not sure or certain that the return that we're expecting is the same as the actual. And also liquidity, how fast that we can convert our investment into cash. Engineering, which is another function, is all about being able to create of an ideated product or a thought product, and then also making of the prototype. So there is a time from the idea generation up to making of the actual prototypes. Brainstorming is very important since I said two heads are better than one. So discussions which are healthily made can bring positive change and impact to the organization. Minimizing or decreasing time to market is key to maintaining competitive edge. As said in our chapter two, some actually are just waiting. So the late movers about the updates in the market, and that's the time that they are going to take any necessary action. So that's also okay or fine. And then the company also has to analyze as to how do we make this as a competitive edge by decreasing the time to market. And IESs can also help us with this. For continuation, we have the CAD or computer-aided design. We're in, we're going to make designs and then we save such, modify such using computers. For rapid prototyping, this is the creation of one-of-a-kind products to test design in three dimensions. So we have the normal things, the height, the width, and the depth. Then this allows a model to be produced in hours rather than days or weeks. Anyway, in today's world, again, we have our respective computers to help us. Next is CAM or Computer Aided Manufacturing or CAM. Systems that instruct machines how to manufacture parts and assemble products using computers to help us in the manufacturing. Next, for engineering, we also have the following. Engineering ISS would aid engineers in designing new products and simulating how they operate. So we actually make use of the computer aid design for the designing, even up to like the actual construction of the prototypes. In fact, simulation is shown here. So we think as to, and we show as to how a certain thing would work in the actual setting or setup and also the materials needed. Next, SEM again, I said a while ago would be showing us the connection of the company with the suppliers and the customers or buyers. So with that, we talk about the purchase or procurement of raw materials. We process the materials into goods or products, and then we deliver the goods to our customers. Then the production process is also known as manufacturing, which is the conversion or processing of raw materials into goods or finished products or services. So products can be goods, if tangible services, if intangible. SCM would also involve monitoring, controlling, and facilitating supply chains or chains. Of course, that's very important since we talk about our relationship with the ones who will be providing our needs for us to be able to provide the needs of our customers or clients who are our kings to begin with. Computer-aided design systems often transfer data automatically to computer-aided manufacturing systems from design to the actual production. Then IT also helps in manufacturing activities. So example would be scheduling plant activities. So the purpose is for us to be able to maximize the usage of resources. Also planning material requirements so that we can forecast and also have the current demand. If ever there is a need for us to transfer or reallocate materials to another, that's also okay, manage inventories, and then grouping the similar work orders so that the thinking, the ideation, and also the preparation would be minimized. So we can minimize resources in that by grouping similar work orders. And again, here are our things needed in 
involved in manufacturing and inventory control information systems. Now, materials requirements or material requirements planning is also known as MRP1, which is just focused on the management of the materials, whether direct or indirect, and supplies of the company, these requirements. Whereas MRP2, the manufacturing resource planning, is focused not just on the materials, not just on the supplies, but also on other costs involved in manufacturing or resources involved. We have our direct labor and factory overhead. These discussions are also discussed, by the way, in financial management discussions or videos. And then other systems and CAM systems, computer-aided manufacturing. MRP has been mentioned a while ago, management of our material requirements. So determines when inventory needs to be restocked. When do we have to purchase again? Then we can also predict the future need based on demand forecasts. So out of our history of the actual sales, then we can also predict the demand. And from there, what would be the quantity of raw materials needed? then takes customer demand as input, then works back to calculate resources needed to produce goods. This is actually the point of the demand and also the budgeting. Because in budgeting, we look into the sales or we look into the units produced, and then we are going to work back. So from units sold, then we are going to work back with the units to be produced and what would be the raw materials and supplies needed for us to be able to produce the goods. Next would be BOM, which would list all materials needed to produce a product, whether that's main or that's just a component or subcomponent. EOQ, on another hand, which is also a discussion under inventory management and financial management, would be looking into the quantity that would equate the costs. We have the carrying costs, which are the costs carried obviously on the inventory to be able to keep that, like the cost of warehousing and all, keeping the inventories intact and safe, and also the ordering costs, the cost for us to buy the product. So the equivalent of the two is called economic order quantity model. And the point is that we would not miss any production deadlines. MRP2 has been explained. Then this would involve the master production schedule that would look into the production capacity in order to meet the customer demands. The JIT manufacturing, on another hand or hand, is that there should be availability of supplies as soon as the needs are there. Or if customers would order, we have the supplies ready for such. And with that, because it is JIT philosophy and manufacturing, then we can avoid the warehousing costs. Then ISS are designed to control manufacturing processes as well as monitor them. This is very important. So ISS are information systems well would really do this, like looking into the difference between our actual and the standard or benchmark. And the difference normally is called variance. If this is like cost accounting. Mm -hmm. Then from variance, we now can determine as to what are the possible adjustments and possible strategies that we can revise, we can add or change or modify or eliminate. If it's the worst thing to happen, then incorporate such in the planning stage and to go in the functions of management or the management processes. So from planning, then organizing, staffing, directing, and once again, going back to controlling. So it's a cycle. And the controlling would help ensure quality because we will have the feedback that we can incorporate in our planning stages again next time. So whether that's positive or negative, positive, how to improve further on, if negative, how to change the negative to positive. Next, shipping which is now the actual transfer of goods can be performed by the manufacturer or shipping company. So some have their companies part of the overall group of companies, but others will have to hire the shipping companies. Then we have many variables to affect cost and speed of shipping. 
this would include the length of routes or roads. So example would be the shipping roads, which is beyond our expertise. But anyway, these are like roads if you're talking about the land or the actual earth with the roads that the ships would really be traveling at or on. Then the sequence of loading and unloading that would affect because if we are on the latter stage, then we can be moving later as well. Then if we talk about the type of the materials, well, the safety and security measures for hazardous materials would be different from the others who are sturdy or that are rather sturdy and that are non easily destroyed or affected. So non-perishable and non-fragile. So if we talk about perishable, hazardous, and fragile, the packaging will be different. Then the fuel prices, especially like nowadays that it's also increasing. Like if we can observe just this week, which is October 2021, this week, well, we have noticed that the prices have increased as well. And then the road toll. So if we, for example, access this particular road, we pay additional transportation fees. Now for shipping, we can also use softwares or ISS to help us. And then this would make the company competitive. The more again, if we have our branch or subsidiary in the organization in which the business is all about also shipping and forwarding. We look into the optimization of the time, the cost, the use of equipment and maintenance. These are very important things. The vehicles are equipped with computers, GPSs, so that we can easily track them a lot of things can happen. Also, aside from this one, if we talk about valuable and costly items which are shipped, there should be insurance so that if something happens, then we can at least get back a portion of that. Then satellite communication and other means of communication should be ready to make our efforts paid accordingly and also increased efficiency by then. This is an example of the shipping movement, how information is communicated between a truck and a shipper's office. So we have our satellite, then the mobile communication. So there's a sort of communication of the two and then vice versa, so back and forth. And to be able to communicate by mobile, of course, we need our connections, right? So network for the telephone, the landline, and also in connection with the network management center and the customer fleet management. So our customers, their networks would be ready if ever we will be able to deliver the goods to them on time. That's our target. This is our first part for the discussion. So hopefully you will get something from this session. Thank you very much and God bless us all.